Welcome to today's lecture. Uh, this is on hydraulic circuits in industrial application. Now, a hydraulic uh, more generally any circuit is an arrangement of individual components to discharge a desired output. Now, here what we find an example a scheme of hydraulic circuit. Like electrical circuit, we need to draw also hydraulic circuit and mainly in uh, hydrostatic transmission system or so to say any hydraulic systems, uh, we need to procure the components. These are not indi individual components are designed, rather circuits are designed and we uh, put together those components connected by uh, the hose or pipes and then uh, it performs uh, for a particular requirements. In this schematic view, what we find that there is a pump. Pump is driven by a motor and then essentially there is a pressure control valves. Pressure control valves in that groups that may be pressure reducing valve or anything, but here pressure control valves mean actually this is a safety valve that is pressure relief valve is used. Then we need to have direction control valve what we have learned in the uh, first lectures. Then flow control valve and uh, linear actuator or maybe there and rotary actuator. Now, in many cases you will find that this direction control valve and flow control valve may be combined together or a separate flow control valve is used and some cases we do not need the flow control valve at all because um, even if this there is a fixed displacement pump, but uh, the velocity of these actuators need not control only it should actuate and it should detract also. Now, with this scheme then what will be the actual circuit? In actual circuit again this is we use the symbol this is pump and coupled to the motor and then this is pressure control valve which is nothing but a pressure relief valve. This means that if the system pressure exceeds uh, due to excess load in that case um, the flow will bypass through the pressure relief valve and in that way it will shape the circuit. Now, here we find a direction control valve this direction control valve looking into this symbol if you have if you know this symbols we have already learned this this is 4 by 2 that this means that 4 ports are there and 2 position this is one position this is another position and this spring means uh, in one side spring means it will assume only one position when we do not actuate this lever. Now, here as shown that in normal condition it is like this that means a cross connection is there cross connection means the flow is going in this directions then this is being retracted. Okay. In that case possibly it will rotate in one directions it is not possible to indicate by this symbol only. And when we actuate this, the spring is compressed and we get this path in that way oil is going through this and uh, then this is actuating and oil from this side is being returned to the tank. Now, what we find when this connection is there, oil is coming through this to the tank. In that case, if you look into this, there is a flow control valve. In that flow control valve what we find there is a check valve this means that oil will return by blowing this check valve and it will 
return to the tank almost without any resistance here. Whereas, if we connect this one in that case oil is going through this and we can this uh, arrow means we can vary this that means we can control the flow. So, there will be a controlled flow for actuation this means that depending on load we may control the speed also. So, in that case this is a fixed displacement pump, but still this velocity can be controlled. And if we actuate this one if we use this side then say this connection is uh, not the connection here this is um, just bypassing I mean this is one line this is another line. So, oil may come this side A again there is a flow control valve this means that we can control this um, speed of this motor also. Now, here this motor in one directional and oil is being returned directly to the tank. There is a it is possible that we can move this and as well as this, but depending on load we do not know which one will move because oil will always flow to the least resistive path. Okay. So, this is just to show that how this circuit can be designed. Now, <coughs> so this is a simple circuit and we can um, design the circuit uh, like this and if we um, have a little knowledge about this um, symbols in that case what we find that um, this is uh, this can be regulated as this arrow is there and this is also that um, uh, depending on the pressure uh, this will operate. So, this means that suppose this uh, here we working with 10 mega Pascal this is also may be the system pressure is 10 mega Pascal due to the load in that case we will probably set 10.2 mega Pascal then if pressure exceeds above 10.2 that means above 10 almost above 10 then this will blow and oil go will go back to the tank. To make such a system energy and cost efficient, but reliable and safe selection of proper components is most crucial. Nowadays with the crisis of energy everywhere. Uh, so, almost in all design it is always thought of how the energy can be saved. Um, for your information if we want to control say flow control, pressure control particularly where we use the servo control always we should keep in mind that there will be pressure drop across the valve orifice and in that way there will be loss that we cannot avoid. Hmm. Um, however, uh, by arranging the system that where uh, we can according to load if we can control this part then probably we can save the energy. Now, it definitely needs designer skill there are systematic methods that means, uh, if we have thorough theoretical knowledge and some little bit experience probably we able to make the energy saving circuit, but always it is there you need an experience to make a good circuit. It is known that fluid power overlaps with um, practically every branches of engineering controlling or powering some part of it. This means that fluid power is used almost uh, I mean every say if you go to the production engineering if you go to the missile even if uh, the spacecraft the, it, there you will find the fluid car uh, power is being used it is uh, together that supply of power I mean power conversion usually there will be a motor to drive um, in this case drive a pump, but that power uh, give the translatory motion as well as rotary motion with torque conversion okay. and as well 
this can be controlled also say for example, we cannot controlling the speed through a flow control valve and uh, fortunately in this case this control signals also um, passes through the oil hydraulics and uh, oil hydraulics in that way the oil medium is very good for um, transmitting control signals. Now, with all these versatility and flexibility, the circuit designer has a big responsibility towards the user of circuit designed. One must uh, therefore, be aware that the final product that is the designed circuit essentially is designed to discharge full reliability under adverse or unexpected conditions. Secondly, functional and meets the required performance specifications for its purpose of control and power transfer. Thirdly, efficient and economical without wasting power. And finally, to be energy saving, simple in design and hardware applications. Uh, this is uh, one is that wasting of power we say say this means that suppose the oil is flowing through the pressure lip valve in some cases we will find that uh, when the, the system is idle then oil is flowing flowing through this uh, pressure lip valve that is definitely waste wastage of, of power that can be uh, made we can make such system that we can save the energy either using this oil for some other purpose or uh, we can use uh, this valve such that when this system is idle the oil is flowing through this valve without much resistance. Many industrial hydraulic actuations take place at low force for most of the time in a cycle of operation. Uh, actually, while we are designing, we can go for various systems definitely, but uh, depending on uh, the operation cycle, how how much we need to operate the circuit within a uh, time period, depending on that, we can uh, design the circuit accordingly. In many cases, if you find that the circuit is um, almost uh, being used for the full time with load. In that case, we perhaps can go for a little expensive components, so that uh, these are used, the circuit is used efficiently. Whereas, in case if we find that it is not being used, say, use, say it is being used for 5 minutes and then 10 minutes cap, in that case we can use a low cost items but there is such a system when it is idle the oil is going through the less resistive path. In such cases it is desired that required high flow at low pressure should automatically convert it to low flow high pressure when the actual working stage in the cycle of operation is required is reached. Incorpor incorporating proper devices such sequences are possible that we will learn in this lecture. The following four methods are frequently adopted to achieve rapid approach with low force and automatic changeover to slow work stroke with high force. Number one is that high low double pump system this is high flow and Mm, low flow this means that high flow and low flow. Then second one this means that when we need low pressure we can have mm, uh, high flow so that we can use the power fully and when there is a high pressure that means high load then low flow. Now, 
kicker actuators with pre-fill valve and header tank. This is one arrangement. So, I shall explain what it is. In that way also we can save the energy. And the sequenced regenerative system and fourthly variable displacement pressure control pump. Among this there are uh, few more components will be there, but still perhaps this one will be the expensive one, but still these four are the common which are adopted to save the energy, but these are just general there are may many other arrangement possible and combination of these again gives may give better performance also. Now, <coughs> first of all it is um, um, better to study that uh, how the uh, I mean total mapping of the power utilization during the operation. So, in many cases you will find the operations are uh, sequenced and maybe we can identify one operation cycle. If we study one operation cycle in that we, uh, operation we know what is the speed, what is the flow etcetera and from there we can um, design our systems. We can have say discrete manner these are the flow, these are the this is the pressure, these are the flow and this is the pressure and from there averaging that we can select a uh, the motor pump and required components. However, if we think that very high force and flow may be the speed is uh, less in that case we need this much uh, I mean we can select our this is one operating zone. On the other hand this um, very high speed, but low pressure. Okay. Then this is uh, we can have this power curve is like that. From there what we find that in this system suppose if we use this force we can go up to this speed. If we use this much force we can go up to this speed. So, we can now select the devices in such a way that whenever the we need high speed we can reduce the force or in other words if there is a uh, less force then we can move with high speed hmm. and this in some cases it, it is automatically adjusted in some cases you can adjust it manually in that case control might be very discrete manner. Suppose if we, we uh, let us consider we are uh, using for hammering or pressing something. If we see that this pressure we need less pressure immediately we can add adjust then um, probably that it is being done at high pressure, but using low pressure. So, that ad adjustment manually we can do like that and for that study we need uh, similar graphs. This is any two four speed coordinates intersecting of the curve represent the actual power requirements. Now, uh, we will study some energy saving circuits. Now, here high low double pump system, this is high low means again high flow and low flow in that way. Uh, these are named. Now, what we find that this is a we find a bigger circle for the pump symbol that is for high flow, but it operates in low pressure and here what we find that this is low flow, but high pressure pump. Now, when there is totally low pressure low pressure it is operating low pressure that means say this maximum pressure is 10 mega Pascals, but this pump may be with 5 mega Pascal. Okay. Uh, sorry this pump maximum 5 mega Pascal and this can go up to 10 mega Pascal. This means that at 5 mega Pascal whatever the flow total flow these two pump can give 
that amount of flow into 5 the mega Pascal flow in liter per minute mega Pascals will give you as the power. So, the motor is selected accordingly. Now, when the pressure exceeds above 5 mega Pascal, then what you will find that this flow is being utilized, this flow is going back to the tank. And for that flow, very little amount of power is required. So, full power is being utilized the 10 mega Pascal into flow of this. Now, how it is operating? Let us study this one. Now, essentially in this circuit, the one reservoir, the strainer, whatever is there, and then the common input is there, and here is a common shaft driven by this motor. So, when this motor is rotating, both pumps are rotating. It is not that one pump we can off the impeller inside whatever impeller or piston actuator or whatever they are that are moving. Hmm. That means, it is pumping the flow and pressure is always experienced by the load. It is not that pump is pumping the pressure. Pump only must be able to withstand with that pressure. Do you understand my point? Say, whenever the impeller is moving, what a impeller or piston, whatever is moving, the flow is there, and at low pressure there will be less leakage, so flow is full. With high pressure there will be leakage, but usually that volumetric efficiency of such pump, this common case may be 90 percent. So 90 percent of the flow will be always there and pressure is always experienced by the load. Now, these two pumps are being rotated, then what we find that these are connected here and they there is one non return valve and then what we find this is tandem center 4 by 3 DC valve. You know understand what is uh, looking into these symbols, say there are 4 ports that is why you have written 4 here and then this is called P port, P is not for the pump, this is for pressure, this one is pressure port and this is T port that is going back to tank and here one non written valve we can use or we may not use and, but this is at low pressure this oil can bypass to the tank. Okay. Then three positions, this is usually called neutral positions and this is one position, this is other position and then what this symbol means? This symbols means that there is a control by a hydraulic actuation is there and as well there is also solenoid valve, electrical control is there. And what we find there is spring, this means that if we actuate this way and then if we um, relieve the actuation load, it will go back to the neutral position due to the spring, same to this part also. And there is also whatever leakage is there, that drain is there, this is called drain port. Anyway, this valve, why we call it tandem, you will find this valve will have either four ports are closed and extreme is that four ports are op open at the neutral position that is like a connection capital H hmm? and in this case two are closed that means load side is closed, but this side is open. So, that is why it is called tandem valve. Okay. <coughs> then um, that means, in normal course, if we do not actuate this valve, this flow will go through this and it will go back to the tank. Now, this is called off loading valve, this is called pressure relief valve and also it is called off loading valve. What is there that a connection is from here to this side, that means, if and again it can be adjusted here. Then if the pressure exceeds, then this will connect this part to 
tank and what is there looking into this connection that um, this is works on somewhat differential pressure that means from this side also pressure is being sensed and this is called off loading valve this valve is called off loading valve okay. and this is a pressure relief valve this is when the total system pressure say 10 mega Pascal. So, when this pressure will exceed 10 mega Pascal then this will the oil will flow through this valve. Now, we can if even if, if we omit this valve and if we are sure the pressure is not exceeding 10 mega Pascal then also this circuit will work. So, this is basically for safety valve. Now, how it is being operated? Now, the actuator extends rapidly using both the flows at low pressure until the set pressure is reached due to increase in load. Now, here say suppose this is, uh, is pressing something, okay. then what will happen initial pressure is uh, low. So, both flow flow of both pumps will mix together and this is giving the pressure to that and it is moving very fast. Now, pressure is increasing say suppose it has increased above 5, five mega Pascal. In that case if we need to move at the same speed we need more power here, but if we use a motor of more power then initial stage it will um, uh, the power will be lost because we do not need that much pressure that much power. Now, in that case what will happen say pressure is exceed that much then this will open. So, oil of this will instead of going this way it will go this way and go back to the tank whereas, flow of this and pressure is high. So, it is keeping this closed it is not going this way it is going directly to this side and this is moving with slow speed. The high flow pump is then off loaded this is off loaded to tank and the low flow high pressure pump handles the load using the power of prime mover. It is an unloading this is earlier we have learned what is unloading valve unfortunately this is for the other class or off loading circuit I shall uh, discuss a little bit about this valve also. So, just looking in the symbols you uh, see this what are the names of such valves. Then during non action period both pump flow are diverted to tank through tandem center valve. This means that we are saving energy in that way when it is not being operated. Now, there is a you may think that if we use suppose it is a closed center that means, four ports are closed at uh, neutral position. What will happen? In that case this, this flow say pressure will initially increase up to 5 mega Pascal then say suppose this is uh, blocked and in that case this oil will go through go back to this tank here at 5 mega Pascal this pump will be off, but unless the pressure is increased to 10 mega Pascal this will not be blown. Then in that case this means that this pump will operate with 10 mega Pascals and then this pump will operate at low pressure and oil will go back to the tank, but still if you think of 10 mega Pascal of this flow almost the full power of motor will be used in that case say power is being wasted, but the question is that still there are closed center valves why we should use the closed center valve, closed central valve is used that where we need the frequent operations and we would like to keep the oil ready for operation always in that case we go for uh, closed central valve. However, uh, for such operations usually you will find that this is with tandem center and this is a very good energy saving circuit. 
Now, this unloading valve and circuits what we have learned earlier, say this is the same, this is very schematic view of that uh, system. This valve is also preferably valve, if you look into this valve and this valve, there is not much difference. This is pressure relief valve, whereas this is we are calling unloading valve. In that case, actually the control pressure line is connected in such a way, when pressure exceeds some limit, then only this operates. So, that is why it is called unloading valve. Now, how it looks like? It is something like this. You will find that in normal case, uh, the pressure is coming over here, the, this is from the pressure side and this oil is also coming over here and then at uh, when this uh, pressure exceeds, then this opens and then all the oil flow, flow through this. Uh, I mean actually, the, uh, no sorry, it is like that this is one pressure line if you remember the other side this side and this is also another line the oil is coming like this and when this exceeds some pressure then this opens all the oil goes back to the tank. So, this is called unloading valve. So, this you can compare with this low pressure high flow pump connection this side is from the main loading system and this is the control pressure and this is the spool normally this remain closed when this pressure exceeds some limit then this opens and oil go back to the tank ok. The symbol is like this. So, this means that this, this is the valve this together you usually you will find this non written valve is also incorporated here. So, together is called unloading valve and the symbol is like this. This is the primary port low pressure pump, this is the secondary port to the tank and this is main system with HP pump. main system pressure is higher than set pressure only HP pump flow is used. No flow through this check valve at that conditions. So, this is another view. Main system pressure is lower than uh, set pressure both HP and LP pump flow are used. in that case flow will be through the check valve oil is coming here and check valve is blown and oil is going to the main system. This is uh, another example of I, I mean this if we summarize this uh, we can write an unloading valve is also another version of sequence valve. Now, sequence valve will come a little later. The sequence valve and the unloading valve their features are more or less same. Only thing this uh, by the control pressure this valve is operated in a different manner than we called sequence valve. It allows the pressure to build up to a value determined by a pressure setting. It is two a valve generally used to bypass part of the circuit back to tank at very low pressure. The internal draining occurs double pump system as shown in figure is an example of unloading valve. Using the same power two outputs and mixed up at low pressure. At high pressure only the flow of one pump is used by the system, whereas the flow of other pump is diverted to tank at a 
nominal pressure. Now, um, so far what I we have discussed say if it is say unloading circuit and receiving circuits. So, this my uh, if it is a short note you may use the answer uh, a brief description how it is working and then this few points that will be a short note type questions, but otherwise describing all such thing you may expect that this is a full question how this unloading valve is works and how it can be used for energy saving with low flow and high flow pumps. Then discuss the second point if you remember we uh, talked about kicker actuators with pre-fill valve and header tank. Now, let us see this circuit first. In that case, we find this pump and then he, as the arrow is not there, then we should call this is a fixed displacement pump. That means, when we run this motor, it will rotate at a fixed uh, rpm, fixed speed, except we can control the motor of course, but the pump displacement is fixed. What does it mean? If you have the idea of swept volume that is volume displaced in one revolution that remain constant for this pump. This flow may be varied by varying the speed of the motor which is not usually done. Then in that case we have one fixed displacement pump and then this is the pressure relief valve. It is uh, not only pressure relief valve as we find that this is the pilot line from this side and pilot line from other side also usually with this some symbol it is we should say that pressure reducing valve that we can also control the uh, this reduce pressure. But anyway uh, this system will work if we use ordinary pressure relief valve here also. Then again this is tandem 4 by 3 DC valve the same valve what we have discussed. After that what we find that there is two cylinder this is the load platform. The load will be let us consider it is uniformly distributed in a sense then when uh, this is we say it is a press then it is uh, pressure over this platform is uniform let us consider for the clarity. Now, we find these two cylinder of smaller area these are called kicker actuators whereas, this this is the main actuator. Okay. Then what we find that there is a header tank and from this header tank through a non return valve which is called prefill valve that is connected to the main tank and then what we find in this non return valve which is called prefill valve this is also pilot operated that means mm, by controlling this we can allow the flow from this side to this side also when this symbol is there with this dotted lines that means this can be operated uh, i mean flow can be allowed from this side by actuating through this uh, signal this is the control line. Now, this is called pressure sequence valve if we look into the unloading valve and pressure pressure sequence valve symbols are more or less sim same only you can say that by slight minor operational change operational feature the name is different. So, how it operates? rapid approach with minimal force output is achieved by diverting the flow from the pump to the two kicker actuators only. So, when there is a little force then what is happening? So, we have connected this one connected this means this path is connected that means, it is actuated this side it is connected like this so oil is going like this and then here it is coming it is coming over here it is coming over here then what will happen this with the low load 
this is moving upwards the kicker actuator is moving upward with high speed hmm. all the flow are being used. Now, one uh, thing I would like to mention here when a crossing lines with a dot means these are connected pipes are connected. If there is a crossing without such dot it is not connected hmm. actually in some cases for careful design we just put it line like this say electrical circuit we put it like this, eh? but do not be confused looking into this wherever the connection is there dot will be there. Okay. So, <coughs> what is happening this is moving, but as you see this is this is crossing not connected. Then during rapid advancement rapidly it is moving upward the pressure sequence valve remained this is the pressure sequence valve remain closed and the main actuator is extended by two kicker actuators driven by full flow from main source. All the flow is moving this where this this is closed this is not being operated no flow is going through these sides. Now, as this is moving upward this is a um, this is these all three are coupled to this load platform. So, we need to have some oil here also that means, this should not the no no air should be there oil should come over there for that this header tank is there and from this header tank oil is coming into this cylinder this is simply being filled. The main actuator is moved by two kicker actuators in this situations it is filled in by oil from the header tank via pre fill valve. And then when the work table fitted on actuators reaches to push the load the pressure increases actually any press you will find initially this uh, say suppose it is uh, squeezing uh, this cotton let us consider. So, initially you will find that cotton is put in between and there is no load or if you think of a the paper cutting machines the paper on the paper this actuator is moving say it is applying the load, but initially you will find this paper start with a gap a no load almost no load. Now, the when they are pushed and this all this material will come very it will be squeezed in that case pressure will be failed and the sequence valve opens and prefill valve is closed. Now, the pressure has increased in that case the with, with this setting the pressure setting is has that because this whatever oil is going this side the kicker actuators that is also is going to this uh, pressure sequence valve, but this pressure is low. So, it is closed now when the pressure is increased this will open then oil is going to this side and due to that this will be closed and then this oil will go to all three cylinder actuator through this path it is going through this way and to these two cylinder it is going as it is, but the flow will be automatically divided. flow will be automatically divided and uh, this is one interesting point is there total load is distributed over there. So, total load divided by the area that will give the pressure. Mm. Now, what we would do suppose this load it will be distributed in such a way that in this three pressure will be same that means, suppose this area is just a double of this two cylinder that means, this will take one load one I mean one unit load this will take another unit load and this will take two unit of load it is like that automatically this load will be distributed over the platform. Now, still there is a problem suppose the load is in such a way 
that it cannot balance. In that way, you will find that uh, one will move faster than the other, but definitely there is some system to equalize the load. Hmm. That is interesting if you uh, calculate numerically when these three are moving and performing uh, some operations with load, then the pressure will be distributed uh, equally over that. Total flow of pump is now shared by three actuators resulting in slow motion, but with higher force keeping the power consumption by the pump more or less same. In retraction when the main DC valve is put now retraction has started is uh, DC valve direction control valve is put in the other phase that means we have now connected like this the pressure drops below the sequence valve pilot and the return line of two kicker actuators are open to tank. So, now we have connected uh, this way say this cross okay, and then this path is connected to this then this oil is going like this and it is going other sides okay. and uh, oil from this side is going back to the tank. So, oil is coming from here here now this oil cannot come to this tank. Hmm what is done in that case the sequence valve is closed again due to this sequence valve is closed because we do not have sufficient pressure and the return line of two kicker actuators are open to this tank. Okay. This much we have learned, but we still do not know what is happening to this uh, main uh, cylinder flow. The flow from main actuator is returned to the header tank via prefill valve because now this is uh, actuated and then oil is again going back to the prefill uh, I mean header tank. So, this pilot pressure will open this one, but this path is closed. So, oil has to go back to the tank there is no way. During non active period pump flow returns to the tank via this tandem valve as this is a tandem valve we when it is in neutral position so all the oil is going back to the tank. So, this is a very good example that when we use such pressure load and uh, these things with a um, this uh, kicker actuators and prefill valve we can save the energy only thing as there is a tandem valve the operation will be slightly sluggish than if we can use closed center valve, but really that does not matter because we are using some pressure we have to keep the material we have to move the material. So, if there is a time delay for such operations this really does not matter. So, this is one example of the power saving systems. Now, uh, how this uh, valve uh, look like? Uh, this is the sequence circuits as you find that the oil is coming in and oil is going out through this valve and then this is uh, the pilot pistons through which uh, it, it can be opened also externally. Say for example, this if you this signal is there then this will open and this oil will go otherwise if there is a certain uh, increase in pressure this will open and this uh, oil will flow out. And uh, also uh, if you can study this primary system pressure line is here and then uh, with this when the pressure exceeds some uh, amount then this uh, opened to the secondary system. Okay. So, um, I, I suggest that you should see this figure and you should uh, study this valve. Uh, here it is how written how it, it operates the sequence valve can externally piloted 
uh, the plug P is inserted to um, activate external pilot. Note that for internal piloting the plug is to be removed and the uh, and a plug is inserted at XP port. I mean here if you put this plug it then not it is externally actuated it will be actuated internally internal pilot is required. Also all sequence valve are externally drained through XD ports this is to avoid the back pressure say this where there is a possibility of back pressure then draining is essential. In a carefully designed valve internal draining is also possible by removing internal D plug with X D is plugged. So, it is also possible some internal draining through this port and this is another view of this valve and uh, there is auxiliary external pilot is there this is just to improve the performance of such valve. Now, uh, if we look into the other circuit the sequence regenerative circuit in that case we have one sequence valve here and again this is 4 by 3 DC valve and this is a simple pressure relief valve and fixed displacement pump. In that case the rod end discharge flow is mixed at point M this side flow is mixed here and with the main flow from pump to the piston end actuator via line R the retail line when the DC valve is put into Y positions. If we put into this positions then the flow is going through this and from here the flow is coming over here and this is being mixed it is possible in uh, regeneration and this sequence valve this results in relatively high speed actuation system it is called regenerative circuit this happens until the load moving in extension phase is enough to increase the system pressure to crack the pilot pressure of the sequence valve. Suppose uh, it is moving at a fast speed, but the load is now increased. In that case, there will be increase in pressure. Once the increase in pressure is there, then this valve will open, this valve will be operational, and then the discharge flow from the rod end returns to the tank then what will happen this flow instead of being mixed it will be back to the tank through this valve through this line it will not come this way this will directly come to this way and it will go back to the tank. So, in that way what we find if there is less load the regenerative circuit function will be operated and this will move at a faster speed when there is a pressure then this flow through this valve will go back to sequence valve will go back to the tank and this will operate at low speed but high pressure. This circuit is now like an ordinary circuit utilizing the full power to move the load. While the DC valve is set at A x the pump flow is diverted to the rod end via check valve into the sequence valve. The rod end retracts the flow from the piston end returns to the tank this is again like an ordinary circuit. Now, the thing is that only here that if we omit this sequence valve then this will operate at the same speed the full flow 
flow will be mixed and it will go there in that case power will increase. So, without this this whole circuit is a regenerative circuit with this we should call this is a regenerative circuit with energy saving. And with the area ratio this is another interesting things the area ratio is 2 is to 1 that means if this area is 2 then this area is 1, but keep in mind that does not mean that rod <laughs> diameter and the piston diameter is 1 is to 2, the area is 1 is to 2. In that case we can have the same speed in regenerative. Now, this is another circuit uh, I think we can continue later also we can study the circuit may be in the next lecture we will study this. So, this is with the variable displacement pump we can have the same energy saving system only thing this such variable displacement pump is very expensive say for example, if we uh, the same pump same feature except this pressure compensation and the variable displacement part the cost may be if it is a cost of this pump is 5000 with such um, variable displacement system it will be at least 15000 3 4 times more than a pump that is why if we go for such a system we have to be very selective. But in the uh, using such variable displacement pump with a proper control system the energy savings will be uh, more assured and we can say more fine control will be there. So, now we can study this circuit may be in the next time and this is again um, um, this is kicker uh, circuits with an accumulator. This the same operational, but with this accumulator it uh, further saves the energy and in this case we do not use uh, the open a tandem center we have used a closed center valve here. This uh, other two circuits with unloading valve. So, in this circuits what we differential unloading valve and pressure reducing valve in this case uh, we have only simple one unloading valve. These are more or less you can find that here we have used one accumulator here without any accumulator, but we have used a variable displacement pump this function and power saving more or less same here we can have uh, finer control, but this is more expensive than this. And uh, uh, this we have uh, followed this book will not be available uh, in the library this is out of print also same as this book and this is also very expensive book and I do not think our library is having. Anyway, I, I will uh, uh, this note will be available to you. Thank you for listening.